Hello and welcome to some more Valheim. Chiselchip here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to dig a basement. And not just any basement, a fully established basement. More than just a hole in the ground, fully decked out with stone and everything. And I will be showing you how to get it very perfect and make basement digging a much easier thing for you in the future. Many of my videos in the Valheim Let's Play series, the houses have basements, and so I figured I'd make a bit more of an in-depth tutorial today about how to dig them. So starting out, you want to find a place of land, usually a little bit above water level, so like you can't dig a basement right here, because if you dig down, it will just fill up with water. So I'm going to be doing it right up here. Uh, I usually love to do basements, especially in the mountains biome, um, things like that. And we're just gonna, yeah, this, this plot of land up here looks pretty nice. So we're just gonna grab the hoe and begin leveling it out. Shouldn't take too long if the plot of land is already very flat, um, like it is right here. But in some cases, you will have to raise the ground uh, to get a, a plot of like flat land, in which case you can just right click the hoe and you can be able to raise the ground with stone before going over it with the leveling tool. And that just makes a nice level platform, as you can see. You can make the basement literally any size you want. I'm going to do a fairly fairly average basement for a fairly average home, um, just so you guys can really get the most out of this tutorial. But with that said, let's finish out this leveling, and I'll get back to you guys in a minute. All right, so this is looking pretty good. Fairly average sized leveled area for a house. So the next step is to find the grid of the land. And what I mean by that in Valheim, there will usually be like an X, um, XZ, I guess, coordinates here of how the dirt will go. And you can take your raise ground tool and you'll obviously need two stone and a workbench for every time you do this. But we're just going to click it once, and you can see how it looks like a square. So you can clearly see that the ground goes this way, and this is our coordinates here. Going this way, and this way. So we have to follow that grid when digging a basement. So that's helpful to know when kind of positioning your house, you will need to position it. So pretend... Uh, this is the floor of my house. I could not build the floor of my house like this if I wanted a basement. I'd have to build it along with the grid of the land, uh, like so, if I want to have a basement under it. So with that said, now that we know the grid of the land, I'm just going to go ahead and level this big chunk back out again. And now we can start digging. So this will be essentially how you do a basement before you build the house on top of it. It is much easier to do that than to already have a house and then dig a basement under it because you can do a lot of fine tweaking and other things that I'll show you. So I usually like to start smack dab in the middle and just start digging a hole right down into the ground. And obviously the better the pickaxe, the faster this will go. All right, so that's feeling pretty good for my basement. Um, now I'm just gonna start expanding it till it is about a good size that I like. And in terms of depth, we can set the exact depth later, so don't worry about that just yet, but you definitely want it to be below uh, your head, obviously, so your head's not sticking up above uh, the ground there. And then you'll notice as well that two or three of my edges actually have this uh, sort of stone and this one edge is just a sharp edge like that. That is okay. Um, Valheim basically loads in chunks. So we're basically digging right on the edge of a chunk. So that's why it looks like that. Um, but don't worry at all. That's completely normal if you're digging on the edge of a chunk. Um, which is basically just a section of loaded terrain. Now you can see that the pickaxe by default will dig a trench about this wide. At least the iron pick. But you see we have to remove about half of the trench here. So rather than aiming my pickaxe at this section of land, I'm actually going to aim my pickaxe as if I was digging a full trench and that was the edge. So I'm going to aim it right here. And you can see that it takes care of that just fine um, for us. And so that's how you'll dig out like little half sections um, and get things to be a bit more refined. So again, rather than putting my pickaxe right here, 
I'd aim it slightly to the left of this, and it's going to dig out that little half section. So just kind of getting a feel for the pickaxe is a really good thing to do uh, to practice. And with that said, let me expand this to the desired size, and I'll get back with you guys in a minute. All right, this right here is looking pretty dang good for a good solid basement size. Now, to determine the exact depth of the basement, what we're going to do first is determine whether or not you want a stone or a wood floor above the basement. So for this case, I'm going to do a stone floor because I always like my basements to be compatible with a stone floor um, rather than only being able to do a wood floor. And what I mean by that is placing stone above the ground like this does come down uh, slightly farther than placing a wooden uh, plank above the ground. As you can see, the stone sticks down farther. So we'd want the basement floor to be compatible if you do decide to do a stone floor above it rather than a wood. Because you can always just cover the stone with wood uh, like so if you want to do a wood floor. So I'll just place a stone piece kind of on the side right here just to make it a little bit easier and use the little two meter wall here. Um, so as you can see, that is three, um, three meters tall until the bottom of the stone. That's usually how deep I like to go with my basements. Uh, you can obviously go um, as deep as you want until you hit the dig limit. Um, but as you can see, I want the floor to be snapped below this bottom piece of stone. So what I'm going to do is dig this section uh, down just a bit until I can see clearly that bottom corner of that stone, which will make it possible for me to snap the floor in. So I like that height right here, about the height of this little corner that I'm standing in right now. So now I can go ahead and destroy my snapping points there. Take the hoe and begin leveling out the ground while I'm standing in the section that I think is deep enough. So you can see the whole basement needs to come down a little bit. Another thing with the hoe, you can see that there's those circles that kind of ripple out. Make sure that the very edge of where they go is not like that because that will completely ruin your corners here. Make sure that that's just inside the edge of where your walls are. So that's an essential trick for leveling. And then also, I said you could make the basement any size, but it'll be much easier if you make the basement um, no smaller than the size of the maximum radius of this little ripple effect on the hoe, because then you'll be able to actually level the whole thing uh, without damaging the corners or the walls or anything like that. So basically, the rest of this is a little bit too high to just level with the hoe. So we're just going to take it down a little bit with the pickaxe before we go ahead and level it. Alright, that's looking nicer. Now we can just take the hoe and again, making sure that that little ripple edge does not go past our stone wall here. And just right up to the corners here, we can begin leveling out the entire floor of the basement. Alright. Alright. Would you look at that? That is an amazing hole. So that is only the first step to building an awesome basement, is creating a really nice hole that is level all the way around the rim of it, and level on the floor of it to the exact depth that we want. So now the next step is to line the basement with a nice stone wall and kind of make a rim for snapping the floor of the house onto. So what I like to do, again, like I said, I like to make it compatible with a stone floor. Um, so what I'm going to do here is actually choose a corner. It can really be any corner. And I'm going to snap the stone right on the edge of where that corner is so that it kind of overlaps on both sides like this. So you see like half of it is snapped into the ground, half of it is overlapping that hole that we dug. And same thing on this side. So that's how I like to start, and then I like to create an L shape. So I'm just going to snap stone all the way to one side, 
and then all the way to the other side. So something you can see here is that the stone here looks like it's pretty good in terms of overlapping halfway here and being halfway into the ground, but you can see that it's a little bit, little bit too far into the ground pointed that way instead of overlapping into the hole. So what we're going to do now, now that we know that, and then we're going to analyze the other side the same way, we can see here that the seam of the stone is right here. We don't want that. We want the ground to be right in the middle of where the stone snaps to. So what I'm actually going to do on this side is make the basement slightly wider. And again, doing that half, uh, half a pickaxe trick that I just showed you guys of aiming slightly to the left, uh, or slightly to the right in this case, uh, to just nudge out that stone just a little bit. So you can see here that now this section will be halfway in between that seam. So again, just aiming slightly to the right, slightly to the right. And the corners are always the most difficult part, but I think I'm going to leave that. Sometimes they will be a bit of a 45 degree corner versus a sharp corner. That's just the way the ground likes to likes to do it. So don't worry if that happens and don't 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 go too close to the wall here. Make sure you just kind of ease into it. You can see there that that was even too close to the wall. And so basically to repair something like that, um, we're going to have to burn through a whole bunch of stone or make the entire basement bigger. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to fill that in with stone and re-level it out up top here. And I'm kind of doing this purposely to show you how you can kind of repair things like that. So as you can see, it didn't take up too much stone if you did actually gather all the stone for this. But again, just making sure the halfway and there you go. Nice little corner there. And now we're going to re-level out the ground in the basement in that section that we dug. Um, and again, just making sure that hoe comes right up to the edge of the walls there. Right up to the edge of the corner. And that is looking pretty good. All right, so now you can see that this side is snapped pretty nicely half and half. So if we take another piece of stone, you can see halfway inside that seam and halfway outside that seam. So that's how you determine the exact kind of width of the basement. And now all we got to deal with is this side not quite being center. So we're going to go ahead and destroy this. Because now that we know that looks pretty good. And now we can see that there's slightly more overhang on this side than there is into the ground. And there's slightly more into the ground on this side than there is overhang. So that means that we have to essentially put this stone piece just back to the left a tiny bit and we know the entire basement's going to be centered so if you don't want it to snap just press shift while you're placing it and then you can just free place it wherever you want and it's not going to snap to that previous piece of stone so we're going to line it up with that same line but we're going to snap it slightly offset like that destroy all of those guys and re-snap them to that first piece of stone and now, as you can see, we have even overhang, half overhang, half into the ground. And half overhang, half into the ground. So now that piece is extremely good and centered. Now we can snap our next side here. And you can see that that's looking really good. Half overhang, half into the ground. And so once you get it nice and centered like that, we can go ahead and complete the entire rim of our basement here. All right, so the entire rim of the basement now is complete. Looks like we've got a little Graylin here. I don't really have much to deal with it. Maybe the pickaxe. There we go, perfect. So with the rim complete, you can now see that standing in here, we have this little half overhang all the way around the basement. And that will be for the basement walls, if you do choose to do basement walls. You could obviously just keep it this natural stone here. Um, but I like to usually do it stone for a basement. Uh, but you can also do wood, and you can see how you can just snap a nice wall to that edge of stone going all the way down to the ground. 
Um, but for me, I'm gonna do it out of stone because that's what I like a lot, uh, a lot better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let's see. Probably actually gonna use these big stone bricks on the ends here because they are evenly placed if I do do that. And then for the sides, I'm gonna do one like that, one like that, like that, and like that. And now what we're gonna do is take our little one meter high walls and we're going to snap those all the way around. And you should just be able to point it directly at that wall of the of the basement, the stone area, and it should just snap right below these. And you can see this side is not wanting to snap, so we're just gonna aim just to the edge of that previous one that we did snap in place. And again, this one's not wanting to snap, so we're gonna first snap one over here and just place it just to the edge there. And we'll have a little bit of stone kind of spilling in here. I don't mind that, to be honest. Uh, it kind of adds a bit of character and such, so this is essentially how I love to do the basements. And we're just gonna go ahead and fill these center pieces in. And now, sometimes I like to leave these open. Sometimes I like to fill them in if you do have like an odd number like that. Uh, for example, if I left it open, um, you could even put a couple of little chests up in there, um, which can be kind of cool if your basement is like for storage. You can kind of leave gaps in the stone wall to place chests or other things like that. Um, for this case, I'll just go ahead and fill them in, but I figured I'd show you guys that because we're all about creative designs and everything on this channel, and I'd love to just, uh, just know that that's one of your options. And now it's time to fill in the floor. So we can take our stone floor and essentially just snap it right onto the wall like that. Uh, you just aim at the ground and it should just snap right in. And that will give us our three meters that we want from the floor to the ceiling of our basement. All right, so that pretty much marks the basement being completed. Um, as you can see, it looks extremely clean. These are overlapping the ground by quite a bit, so you're never going to have like little holes poking through the edges of the wall or anything like that. So yeah, I hope you guys liked that. Uh, if you want to click off the video at this point, this is pretty much the completed basement. Um, now I'll show you guys how I usually like to do the floor of the basement. And for that, I usually will use the iron beam. And what we're gonna do basically is just put one pretty much centered, it kind of depends, but you just put them every four meters or so. So I'm actually gonna put one on this wall centered and on this wall. And you can have them facing any direction you want, but that will allow us to entirely snap a stone floor on and have it be adequately supported by the iron beams. All right, so now we have a nice consistent floor. And as I said earlier, if you don't like it being stone, just snap wood over the whole thing and have it be a wood floor. Uh, but the stone will also allow you to snap fireplaces and hearth and everything else to it. Um, and for a house with a basement, it is a bit more fancy. You know, I'm not assuming that as a very beginner house, you're gonna have a house with a basement. So you should be having stone by the time you're doing large basements and everything. Uh, but again, you can do it out of wood perfectly fine. And in this case, I like this little area for a staircase. So I usually just destroy two little blocks like that and then just place the ladders um, side by side just because I like that for basements more so than the normal stairs. It just allows for a, a much tighter, much tighter space, a little more rickety, whatever, assuming this is like a cellar, some storage, um, maybe a winery or a tavern down here. You know, you can get as creative as you want with the basements. So that would essentially be my stairs. This would be the upstairs. And again, you can expand the upstairs to be much bigger than the basement if you want as well. You could do like a little bump out on one side or, you know, however you want for the floor plan of the house. With that said, I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. I know I've been having some requests to do some more of these little, little build tips and tutorials. 
um, and go really in depth aside from what I show in the Valheim survival series. So I hope you all enjoyed. And with that said, I will see you in the next Valheim survival episode or another building tutorial. But do be sure to subscribe and comment down below if you do have any suggestions or other tutorials you'd love to see. All right. Cheers, Vikings.